Okay. I hope you all had a great lunch. So, ready for more talks. Let's uh, talk about uh, custom CSS and how it affects uh, consistency of our UIs. My name is Artem, and I'm, I'm using React. I also work at here in Berlin. Uh, sponsors? So what I mean by inconsistency in UI is this. Imagine there are three different buttons. All have uh, different borders, a uh, little bit different shades of white background, uh, different uh, text alignment, and uh, this left one has some unusual border radius and box shadow. It also has some weird icon. I don't know why. Uh, I found uh, that uh, in applications uh, we use custom CSS uh, most of the time for typography or white space. By typography I mean, for example, uh, text color or text size, and white space could be uh, space uh, putting inside components, like a button, or uh, space between components horizontally or vertically. And uh, by custom CSS, I mean CSS that we write inside our app-level components, not in uh, generic components like buttons or select boxes that we can put into our component library. Uh, and this kind of CSS is pretty common. Uh, you have uh, all this uh, many uh, class names with uh, one or two CSS rules to define font size or color or some margin. They are pretty repetitive because most of the time you want to use the same values, but it's impossible to make sure you use the same values. And this is the primary issue I want to solve. Uh, Probably the most obvious uh, way to solve uh, inconsistency issue, issue is to introduce uh, variables, either CSS variables, preprocessor variables, or CSS and JS. In that case, you can have uh, just JavaScript variables in some file that you share between your components. Uh, variables can help with consistency, but there are several issues that variables can't really solve. First is uh, you have to write more. You have to think about class names uh, every time you want to have a margin between your components, for example, or you want to have uh, secondary text. You want to create. You have to create a class and put some some CSS into this class. Second. Uh, it's hard to make sure that uh, developers use these variables uh, that they, the correct way, that they follow designer's guidelines. For example, you can have uh, variables for small text and light text, which is gray. And you don't want uh, developers to use them together because it will make text harder to read. With variables, you can't really make sure people don't use them together. And the last one, it may be hard to update if you want to change some styles. For example, you use uh, gray text for secondary text, you use gray color, and you want to replace it with opacity. In case of variables, you can just change variable. You will have to go to all your components and change CSS to change color to opacity. So. How can we solve all these things? I think you already I think you already know what I want to propose since we are on React conference. So I suggest to use components instead of these custom styles. Let's look how can we do it. For example, typography. If you define the colors, uh, textiles manually, you can have a lot of different styles in your application, and most likely you don't need all the styles. So we can have a couple of components, like this text component, 
that uh, has uh, the minimum amount of styles uh, that you define the uh, component props, and you use it like this, just a regular text or small text. You have a small API, which is well-defined, easy to change if you want. Second example is white space. Uh, I see two most common uh, usages of white space in components. Uh, it's the first is uh, padding inside component, like padding inside a button, for example. And the second is uh, white space that you use to glue components together, either horizontally or vertically. There is a uh, very good article by uh, Nathan Curtis on uh, white space uh, in user interfaces, and he proposes this framework, which uh, covers most of white space need. Uh, on top is just regular padding, uh, and then squished padding uh, that you would use, for example, in the button, uh, which, mean, which means uh, vertical. Puddings are two times smaller than horizontal puddings. The same in opposite direction, and uh, on the bottom we have uh, stack and inline, which are uh, margins between components. And based on this framework, I create a React component called React Spaceman. It is uh, based on 8 pixels grid. Uh, it uses clause sizes to define the amount of white space you want. and uh, it has uh, geometric projection, uh, which means the next uh, size is two times bigger than the previous. The API looks exactly the same as we've seen on the image two slides before. So you have paddings, you have uh, margin below component or between components, either horizontally or vertically. And you can use it to you can use it to space uh, to define space inside components. For example, here we have a button that has a padding of uh, 16 pixels uh, horizontally and uh, 8 pixels vertically. Or you can use it for gluing components together. For example, to make this layout, you would use it like this. So here are benefits of using components instead of custom CSS, in my opinion. The first, limited freedom, because you have clearly defined API in, in a component instead of a bunch of different variables or even hard-coded values and it leads to better consistency in your UI. Many, many times you can avoid creating styles entirely for a component, and if you don't use CSS and JS, you can avoid creation of a separate CSS file, which is very cool in my opinion. Then code reviews are easier. Every time you see custom CSS in code review, you question yourself, do we, do we really need this uh, custom code, or we can replace it with some uh, generic component that we already have. It's easier to document. You can use the same tools that you use to document components like Storybook that we've heard in a talk before or Style Guidist that we'll see tomorrow. You have a better developer experience if you use TypeScript and Flow because you'll have auto-completion for all the props in these generic components. So the main idea of my talk, uh, UI should be consistent by default, and uh, we should use custom styles only when it's required by design. Not Things should not be randomly custom. That's all. Thanks for listening, and, and use components. Any questions? Oh, do we have a microphone for questions? Okay, here it is. <laughs>
Nice talk. Thank you for, for this. Um, will you, as you mentioned, uh, Curtis, will you, will you consider using design token to build those components uh, or not? By design tokens, you mean CSS variables so or something more complicated? So design token is like it's a way to encapsulate design decision in, in, a, in a technology agnostic way. So you can export it for, for example, JavaScript or iOS or Android, use XML and, and so on. And the idea is like similar to variable. That's like you could probably use those for those low level components. So it's like, you know, the, the design decision work across because what you're doing here, it's like you're just saying, okay, all my design decision going into React component. What if you have um, complex stack with, with legacy, with different places, how you handle yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I think it would definitely help. Uh, in my talk, I'm mainly considering uh, the developer experience, the time when you actually compose your UI from components. Okay. At this time, I think you should use components, not some custom CSS. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, thanks for, for your talk, uh, very good one. Um, my question is, uh, how is it different from typography.js, or did you, uh, could you uh, research it a little bit, the typography.js, and is it like similar or different? Can you explain mm, a little bit? I don't really remember exactly it does, as I remember it gives you some something for typography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can combine. You can use it the way you would use CSS variables, and then you can create these components with nicely defined API to ensure consistency in the app, because most likely you don't need all the stuff that typography.js will give you. So you will need some way to decide which of the things you want in UI or not, and I think component API is very good for that. More questions? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.